Hi! In this video, I will demonstrate how you can use an infrared receiver module with ESP32 using MicroPython. What I have here is an infrared receiver module from Gorilla Cell ESP32 Development Kits. It uses BS1838 infrared receiver photodiode which is low cost and easy to use. The module has three pins, namely G for the ground pin, V for the supply voltage, and S for the infrared receive signal pin. In order to follow this lesson, you will need an ESP32 development board, a Gorilla Cell ESP32 shield, a three pin, female to female, two point jumper wires, and of course, the infrared receiver module itself. In using the Gorilla Cell development kits, the following should be followed. When attaching the DuPont wires to the infrared receiver module, the color coding should be observed. That is, black for the ground, red for the VCC, and yellow for the control signal pin. While when attaching the other end of the DuPont wires to the ESP32 shield, Match the colors of the wires to the colors of the pin headers such that black is to black, red is to red, and yellow is to yellow pin headers. For this lesson, I choose GPIO 23 to serve as the input signal pin from the infrared receiver photodiode. Infrared communication is widely used in remote controllers for almost all of our home appliances. Hence, there are a variety of protocols available, but the most popular is the one from the NEC. Now for the software part, I prepared here the example source code for this demonstration. We will use a library to handle receiving and translating the received infrared signals. Thankfully, Peter Hinch provided us on his GitHub the MicroPython IR driver library. So, the link is this one, github.com, Peter Hintz, MicroPython underscore IR. But for the simplicity, I trimmed down the library for to make it easier. The library that I pick up is to handle only the NEC. Copy this library, copy this all, and paste it to your MicroPython IDE. In my case, it's Tony IDE. So I already have it here in the Tony IDE, and save it to your MicroPython device. By clicking File menu, select Save As, select MicroPython device, and save it as IR underscore rx.py and click OK. Now for example number one, we will just decode and display the received infrared data in the repo. Let me click the run button to execute example number one. Now with the use of this remote controller, infrared remote controller, we can press any button and it should return the data and the address for its buttons. Okay? Simple as that. Let me click the stop button and let's go to example number two. Now for example number two, I recorded e-data codes for each button of this remote controller and provided its dictionary equivalent key that's as this one if you press the power button it will return 0x45 which is equivalent to this key which is power or if you press the mode key it will return 0x46 let me press the run button to execute example number two 
Now, if I press play, it will return play. Or this one is previous. This is plus. This is 8. This is 5. And this is 2. And so on. Now, let me terminate this one first. And let's go to example number 3 for an application. In this example, we will demonstrate a simple application of remote controlling the state of the onboard LED. Of course, you could control more advanced and useful than this. But I aim to provide the simplest possible example. So, here it is. Let me press the run button to execute example number 3. And by pressing 1, you should turn on the onboard LED. Pressing 0, you should turn off the onboard LED. Pressing number 2, will blink the onboard LED. As you can see. Let me press number 1. And... The onboard LED stays on. Or zero, turn it off. Let me press number two again. Now, let me directly turn it off by pressing zero. It works by importing the pin class from the machine module to access the ESP32 pins. Then import the timer class from the machine module to create the timer for blinking the onboard LED. And of course, importing the NEC16, which is the extended NEC protocol, which uses 16 bits of address from IRRX library, which is this one that we saved in the MicroPython root directory. Then we have the IR callback, and this if statement makes sure that there is a data received. So if data is more than zero save the data and address of the infrared and we can print for the debugging purposes now when the timer is enabled it will blink the onboard led which is being called by this line of code period of 500 milliseconds which is periodic calling the timer callback function in our main loop, if there is IR data, it checks if E0 is pressed, it will turn off the onboard LED. And if this LED blinking is true, it will deinitialize the timer, which is used for blinking the onboard LED. And set the is LED blinking variable to false. Same as for IR data is 0x0c or button 1 is pressed, it will turn on the onboard LED and initialize or turn off the timer. And lastly, if IR data is, is equal to 0x18 or button 2 is pressed, we'll set the is LED blinking variable to true and initialize this timer 0 and lastly set the IR data to 0 so that it will not execute this if statement again and again if there is no IR data received so let me try again let's blink let's turn it off let's blink it again and let me set it so, stable on. So, that's it. I hope you found this helpful. As always, the source code that is in here including other information can be found in the companion blog post for this video at techtotinker.blogspot.com Links in the video description. If you have any concern regarding this lesson, please write your message in the comment section. Please give this video a thumbs up and share this to your friends so that it can reach more people who might benefit from this. Please don't forget to subscribe so you will not miss video contents uploaded in the near future. Thank you 
and have a good days ahead. See you next time. God bless.